What's up everybody? Welcome back to the Shop Talk Tuesday. So if you're new to this video series, what this is all about is a pretty much a commentary based type thing where I talk about what questions y'all have in the YouTube comment section or questions on the Facebook page or even emails that y'all send me where y'all ask me different things and I address those, talk about them on here and give y'all a little bit of my insight when it comes to of those things. Uh, we also talk about what we have working in the background that will either be making it into the YouTube videos or will not. Plus we have an awesome viewers knife section where I will pick a random viewer who has sent me pictures of their knives and I will showcase them on these videos. Now, when it comes to the thing that we should talk about in this video, it's actually something I've been asked a whole bunch. And I've addressed it a little bit here and there in other videos months ago but the main question is how do I choose what still I use and why do I use those particular types of stills now when it comes to how I choose them I choose what is available and what is pretty easy for me to get and what I can do with it and how I can heat treat it now when it comes to things that I use on a pretty consistent basis I use 1080, 1084, 1090, 1095, I use 01 tool still, uh, I use 5160, ADC RV2, I use those because with my setup it's pretty easy to be able to, hold on. I am going to just be okay with melting in front of the camera because that was kind of loud. I don't know how loud it was when it comes to whenever I start editing and things like that, but for me, I felt like that was really loud and I want y'all to be able to hear what I'm saying. Now, uh, when it comes to me choosing steels and things like that, uh, I go with, again, what I know I can work with and what I can do with the tools that I have. Now, everybody wants to branch out and try a bunch of different things. I get that. That's cool. I will eventually start doing that stuff, but I would prefer to have the right tools to be able to use those things. So you will not really ever see me use stainless steel, mainly because stainless steel is super finicky. You need a heat treat oven. Uh, there's a lot of people that do cryogenic stuff with them. I, I don't have any of those things. I've got a forge and I've got a one gallon bucket of peanut oil. That's how I treat, heat treat my knives. That's it. So I'm going to use steels that are able to be heat treated with that setup. And I'm just going to do that. Now, eventually, will I get a heat treating oven? Yep. Will I get the other stuff? Yep. I will. But I don't have that right now. So I'm going to work with the steels that I am used to. Now, there's a lot of people that have tons of different stool or like styles of tools and stuff like that. Uh, I almost said stools. Uh, they might have stools. I don't know. I got a little chair right there. But uh, they have different styles of tools and they still end up using ADC or V2 and still end up using 5160 and 1095 and stuff like that, even though they can easily do stainless steels and do all of those things they just choose not to so it is what it is uh still stuck on the stools thing um so when it comes to like me utilizing those things it is all about again the tools that i have and what i would suggest is that if you're going to get into knife making pick a steel that is within the realm of what you can work with and go with that. If you don't have a way to heat treat, use files because all you have to do is worry about uh, tempering those. You don't have to heat treat them as long as you keep them cool enough to where you don't mess with the heat treat that's on them. And then you just temper them down and you're good. Uh, if you have access to a small forge and some peanut oil, something like an ammo can forge like I have, or you just use a torch on the side of it with some matte gas or propane, you know, make sure you're making smaller knives and then 
make sure that you're using something that isn't super finicky when it comes to heat treat because you might not get the best overall heat on the blade before you go into the peanut oil. So use the right size of steel and the right steel to be able to, you know, get a proper heat treat on it. And then whenever you upgrade to a bigger forge, you can do some more finicky steels because you'll be able to actually control the temperature a little bit easier than whenever you're just using a little torch inside the when it's blowing the heat into the chamber you know whenever you get a bigger forge that has a larger burner or multiple burners and you can actually move that steel in there and keep your heat how you want it and consistent as you're doing it that's different you can start using more finicky steels that require heat cycles and things like that but when it comes to uh all of the stainless steels and all of that stuff whenever you have a have to have a heat treat oven i wouldn't suggest that right off the bat you decide you know what i'm gonna get into knife making and then you just go buy a heat treating oven you're crazy don't do that and don't go straight to a 2 by 72 that alone you, you could buy those two things right there and spend three thousand dollars like that you're crazy. Don't don't do that don't do that at all <laughs> because you might not like making knives <laughs> so you just spend all that money and you're not going to get that money back out of those tools so don't do that so what i suggest is again whenever you're going to go and you're going to pick your steels pick the things that you're comfortable with and pick the things that you can easily work with with the tools that you have and if you've got to invest a little bit of money in tools to be able to work on that particular steel, do something that has the least amount of investment possible. Something that you can make. Something that you don't have to invest a ton of money in. Because the only reason why it would make sense in buying all of this stuff is if you're like a YouTube creator like I am, where my YouTube channel will pay me back on some of this stuff. Uh, or you're a knife maker and you're going to be pumping out enough knives to be able to repay yourself for that investment. If you're only going to make one knife a month, 12 knives a year, it doesn't make any sense to buy a 2x72. You're, you're not utilizing it enough to be able to justify that cost. You're just not. And I want to make sure that any of my viewers who are thinking about getting into this particular hobby that they work within the tools that they have so they don't have to make that huge investment right off the bat whenever I first started the steels that I was using were steels to just be able to use or work with the tools that I have and use those things utilize those tools um, without having to purchase a whole bunch of other tools you know had a one by 30 now luckily I had a bunch of other tools that were for woodworking and stuff like that that did transfer over into the knife making realm so that was really nice but I did not have to have this huge investment to be able to make my first few knives and y'all can go back and watch those videos a lot of people like them and are really interested in those particular knives that I made whenever I didn't have a 2x72 or a, you know the forge that's out there or the anvil or you know the bandsaw and all that stuff I didn't have those things and I was still able to create cool stuff with them so there you go that is how I pick the steels that I'm using now when it comes to going and picking them up and things like that uh, I have people that offer me steels all the time especially leaf springs and files and stuff like that if they just find them at swap meets or at uh, estate sales and stuff like that they message me and say hey you want me to scoop up this stuff for you and I'll say yeah cool and then I'll make them a knife with some of the stuff to repay the you know the cost of what they spent on the stuff most of the time they didn't really spend that much money uh, but you know I'll still make them something cool to offset that cost if they don't want any money from me so it is what it is on that but uh, that's how 
you know, I come about my steals and how I go out looking for them and what I'm looking for. It's stuff that I can easily work with within the tools that I have. And that's what I suggest y'all to do. Now, when it comes to what we have working in the background, we got all kinds of things working in the background. We got a video that I'm going to be releasing that's talking about turning leaf spring material into uh, bar stock for knives. Now these both have textures on them and I'll give you all close-ups of those in that video but it's basically how I turn my leaf spring material into knife blanks or not really knife blanks I would say uh, bar stock uh, so that I can then cut them out and do my stock removal and all that stuff with them but how I forge them flat how I texture them with the forging and all that stuff I'll show you all that in that video now when it comes to another thing that I'm working on of course this one right here uh, working on that I am going to end up showing uh, the process of me finishing this on one of the videos as well uh, and then we have of course this guy right here that we're working on and I'll be finishing this video uh, here soon so we'll be getting all of this shaped and all that and then we'll do a video where we actually sharpen it and slice some things and do all that fun stuff but this is going to be awesome. It's actually a lot lighter than I thought it was going to be. Um, so we've got that coming up plus the ADC RB2 really thick chopper that we're going to be working on here soon and a few other knives, you know, maybe utilizing this 5160 right here. Uh, now, uh, what I want to jump into is the viewer's knife section because the knife that I'm going to show you all today, uh, I, I've shown a few of his knives and you can see how his work has progressed as he's been doing this but Dave Sizemore I'm pretty sure y'all are used to his name by now because he is actually the person that sends me the most pictures of his knives and I ask him to do that because he does really good work and this is a guy who's only been making knives for a little bit of time and he doesn't make a bunch of knives but the knife that I'm going to show y'all in this video y'all are really going to like he did a great job on the knife plus the sheath and all that, but we're going to go ahead and cut away so y'all can actually see that full screen. I'm going to talk to y'all while we're actually doing that, but let's go ahead and cut away now. Well, a little bit of info on this knife. It is 01 tool steel that is 3 16ths of an inch thick. It's 8.5 inch overall length with about a 4 inch blade. Now, this one has Cocobolo wood scales with black G10 liners black micarta pins with a nickel silver lanyard tube and a leather cord lanyard with a wooden bead and then of course a leather sheath that he made as well absolutely beautiful how this whole package turned out I really like it well guys what did y'all think about Dave's knife I mean that thing was absolutely beautiful the shaping of the handle the way that the blade was the profile the leather sheath, all that stuff, really like it, guys. Y'all tell him what y'all think about that in the comment section down below. I'm sure he would be pumped to hear what y'all think about it. Guys, that's pretty much the end of this one. Uh, if y'all would, okay, if y'all would, if you're a knife maker, send me pictures of your knives. I don't care if it's your first, your fifth, your 15th, or your 50th. I would love to see them, and I would love to be able to show the guys everything about them and be able to put your name out there you know there was a uh, there was a person in one of the bladesmithing forums that said you know how do I get my name out there how do I get people to look at my knives and look at my things so that I can then end up selling them what are the ways do y'all do it do y'all make Facebook pages YouTube channels Instagrams all that stuff and I always say do all of the above but if you've got an outlet like a channel like mine where they say, hey, send us pictures of your knives so that we can actually tell people about you and your knives, it's the perfect opportunity to do it. So if you're a new knife maker, definitely send me pictures of those. Tell me a little about yourself. If you're a fellow YouTuber, link your YouTube channel in the email so that I can post that and let everybody check out your YouTube channel. Guys, that's the end of this one. If y'all would... Give this video a thumbs up, share this video or one of my build videos that I've done in the past that might be your favorite. And guys, if you haven't yet, bottom corner, hit that subscribe button so you get notified for the builds that we have coming up and we got a lot of them. Guys, thank y'all for coming by. Thank y'all for spending your time with me. Y'all have an amazing day. 
Y'all stay safe, and I'll catch y'all next time.